Welcome to episode 153 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host, and today we are talking with a man that used to fly Blackhawk helicopters. I mean, come on. We're making our way through the fog of life, and Clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. Today, I'm so excited to introduce you to my new friend, Commander Adam Jones. We met actually in a clubhouse room, which is the new app that I talked about on last week's podcast. And we have become very, very fast friends. Adam flew Blackhawks in the Army. He has transferred all the stuff that he learned being a commander into the business world and his insight and some stories that he tells are just they really help change my perspective on things in an instant and we're going to talk about aligning your team feeling empowered and really getting everybody together to go in one direction maybe when your perspective was a little bit off and isn't that how it is so many times i'm actually always staggered that often it's just our perspective on things that when it's changed all of a sudden we feel empowered to do things better even though physically speaking nothing has changed we're the same person same strength same vision same all this but if we can kind of get rid of some of these limiting beliefs and become empowered everything can be different so i hope you enjoy this conversation i have with commander adam jones adam Thank you so much for dropping in with us today and spending some time with me and the Clarity Compressed audience. I'm excited. Oh, man, Paul, I'm pumped up, man. I'm excited to be with you, too. So um, you and I met. We're one of the the kind of uh, the good things that has come from the new app Clubhouse. Um, that's where we met in a Clubhouse room just in the – it was probably like 6 in the morning. We're on, on the line with Glenn Lundy, and uh, I heard you speak. And uh, I was just immediately drawn to your story. Um, you know, Black Hawk pilot, commander um, in the military, and now a consultant and a speaker and a trainer. And um, you know, I'm a I'm a I'm kind of a sucker for dudes that came out of the military and now make the transition into the marketplace. I think that that's just really relevant experience, and I always want to glean from that. So when you agreed to come on the show, I was really excited. Um, maybe you could just tell the people a little about your background. Um, and, and, you know, your history in the military and, you know, why you decided to get into uh, consulting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I served for 10 years. I served in the Army and the Army National Guard, flying Blackhawks, commanding soldiers, and I had a great time doing it. But there came a point where I realized sometimes, you know, I feel like, Paul, you're meant to be the light no matter where you go. And for me, I wanted to be the light in the cockpit. But then there comes a time where, you know, hey, flying was great, but let's take these lessons and help the civilian world learn what it took because honestly, you know what, 1% of the nation is in the military out of that 1%, about 1% 1 of them are officers out of that 1%. I don't even know the percentage become pilots. So it's very rare that someone gets the opportunity that I had. So I just felt look, I had a good time and it was unbelievable to be able to be with some great men and women in America, but we need to take this into the corporate world now and help them understand how to create a contagious culture. Hey, the best thing I ever learned as a, as a new pilot, okay? So you go through flight school, you get to the unit. Now you're at a unit and they go, hey, that's how flight school taught you to fly, but this is how we're going to teach you to fly. We're going <laughs> to teach you how to train for missions. We're going to teach you how to train for the mountains because I was in Colorado. And I remember getting in the cockpit one day and I'm with the most senior instructor pilot in the whole battalion. And uh, him and I started getting to know each other after you know a couple, couple months. And he looked over at me and he said, hey, sir, you know one thing I want you to do from now on? From now on, when you get in the aircraft, go ahead. He said, he said, unbuckle, unbuckle yourself real quick. Take, take the straps off, unbuckle. So I did. He said, put it back on, but I want you to think about it this way. Instead of you actually getting in an aircraft and buckling yourself in, I want you to get in that same aircraft, and I want you to buckle the aircraft to you and to strap it to your body, and you, are, from now on, you're going to tell your body where to go. That's, That's a game un changer. That is unbelievable. Just even the perspective of thinking of it that way. Like you're putting oh, on yeah. this Black Hawk suit. You know? That's exactly right. I'm like, I'm, you know, you feel like a transformer. You're like, you're like yes, that's exactly, that yeah. is exactly the picture that came to mind. <laughs> and, and what happened? Did you fly better after thinking oh, that way? Oh, yeah. Absolutely, man. So much, so much authority, right? That, that moment gave me authority to just say, okay, aircraft, 
here's what we're going to do today. Right. You know what I mean, we're going straight up right now and we're going to keep it nice and steady. We're not going to drift a foot, wow. you know? All right. Now we're going to come into land. We're going to bank hard, right? And we're going to hold that D cell all the way to the ground. I mean, you just start thinking differently. No, to you're where... saying this. This is really like the fact that we're coming along this right at this point in, in the conversation, because I mean, if you just translate that for a second into like when you said like a transformer, like Iron Man suit, yeah. The mentality that you were strapping into that helicopter the first time and you're like, let me make sure that we don't crash and let me wrestle this thing in into submission somehow. But when yeah. he said, Hey, you're making you're strapping it onto you, it's just now an extension of your will. You know, that you can do good with it, that you can make it do, like I'm thinking like from a CEO perspective or a leader perspective, like you're not coming in to like manage the chaos of your business. You're strapping that business on, right? Your office is under your cover, right? You're mm -hmm. strapping that business on. You're saying, this business is going to do something good, right? Like now I get to use this business as a superpower to do good and to contribute and provide for families. And that's that's a mind-blowing moment. I can tell this is already going to be a part that's going to be like the, the, the most viewed part of this whole podcast. Well, there's a huge difference from a helicopter pilot and a fixed wing pilot. Just so you know, when you say fixed wing pilots, they're holding it in the air. They're happy to just be flying. They're enjoying the flight. A helicopter pilot, which is what I was, we're constantly wondering what's going to break. When are we going to crash? Where am I going to land if I lose an engine? I mean, it's it's never ending because pretty low stress environment. Very unforgiving, actually. Yeah, it's I, funny, I believe it. I believe it. Dude, it is. Yeah, but I flew Blackhawks, and that's the UH-60 Blackhawk. Um, I think everyone remembers the movie Black Hawk Down. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, that movie is what made me want to fly them. And uh, I flew them in different states within the U.S., um, Colorado, Michigan, um, and just a couple other areas within the, the West Coast. So for me, actually, combat deployments was never a thing. Um, but I trained soldiers to go to war. I trained them for those deployments. And that was just an unbelievable opportunity. But it's funny how the world works, man. I had four deployments scheduled and all four got canceled on me. So it's just part of my story. That's it. You can't, you can't control that stuff. It just happens the way it's supposed to happen. Yeah, no, seriously. And then with command, what command is, that's, that's a different level of leadership in the military. And there's a lot of officers who never become commanders because they're, they're really looking for some specific, um, not even just skill sets, but just a heart set, right. An alignment of, Look, I care about my soldiers. They mm -hmm. matter to me, and I want to. I want to make sure that if I'm giving a command, that I'm going to take them to not only victory in a mission, but in their life, and we're going to take care of them, right? So, um, I was in charge of 54 soldiers as an Army company commander, um, in charge of uh, aircraft maintenance. So that was, and I'm not an aircraft maintenance guy. It was just the command I was given. I was a medevac guy. Wow, that that's unbelievable. Just even thinking of the how the percentages constantly get dropped. And then of those who end up being pilots and commanders, it's just a, a very select, I think, minds, I think not even just in numbers of people, but a very select mindset um, that you're willing to really just contribute to people's lives outside of the mission at hand. But you understand the bigger picture at large is, is what I hear you saying. Right. You got to learn how to connect. You can't just start speaking all your military isms. <laughs> You know, just like Jocko Willing teaches in Extreme Ownership, yeah, that book does. totally changed my life, man, because it showed me the value that I had as a former Army officer. It, unbelievable. I mean, it, it affected me in a, in a for a different reason, but in, in the same way, it just forces you to say you have a lot more control over what happens than you think or that everyone else wants to tell you. People want to make excuses for things. Natural position, not my fault. And now a lot of other people in the world will coddle you and help you make excuses when that book for me just said, nope. Yeah. <laughs> nope. His whole mentality on saying good, right? Something bad happened. Yeah, good. 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 And he leads <laughs> into the mic. Good. I always hear, I, I literally hear his voice say that in my head on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The other one was uh, the alarm goes off and he's like, I get up. You know, what do you do when the alarm gets up? Goes <laughs> right, off? right. Tell I get, us, I get up. Tell us yeah. your secret. I get up. I have a plan. It's called put my feet on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Jocko, if you're listening to this, we appreciate you, man. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Um, okay, so the I think what you just explained about why someone would be made a commander, right? This heart set, 
I think that is what all of us who have had the opportunity to, to work around great leaders, whether it's in the military or whether it's in business or whether it's in just serving in some other capacity, great leaders seem to have that trait in common, right? They, yeah. they look at their people and they say, I care about these people much more than just the one thing that they're doing right now. And I kind of, great leaders seem to see that person's talent in a different way right outside their role and i've heard you say some things along the lines of that before um and some of the work you've done helping people do exactly that yeah with the, with a great leader they have to be thinking of their soldiers more than themselves the whole time i remember i heard this this was really key this really helped me and i think it'll help someone today even if you're you know a corporate ceo which by the way i mean that's who i work with are you know the six figure seven figure ceos helping them really get this culture thing down but doing it in a way of let's take lessons from the cockpit, not just from the textbook, right? But here's something I learned. An officer's desk, an officer's desk is underneath his hat. We always have to wear a cover whenever we're outside. We call it a cover. Oh, yes, his office is underneath his hat. His desk is his clipboard. Mm -hmm. When I heard that, that totally changed my life because you know what that means? It's not about staying behind the scenes in your office. It's not about, you know, like, as you get one, you got an office mm -hmm. and you can stay there all day long if you want, mm -hmm. but your soldiers don't know who you are and they don't see you. So one thing I always teach is you got to get out in front of your people. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that makes sense. My personal experience has, has shown that when people understand that you really do care for them, they'll run through a wall for you. Yeah. They really will. So your work that you do, so you, you do a lot of executive coaching, right? So these are guys that have a lot of responsibility. They have a lot of competency, and I'm always in, in awe of the, the, the perspective that somebody, a coach um, or a trainer can come and often see something right out of the gate that this very competent, experienced, talented, motivated, motivated person doesn't see. Why does that happen? Yeah, that is a great question. It's because we all have blind sides. You know, every one of us, we have these things. I needed someone to always watch my six, right? We use that term in the military, watch my six, watch mm -hmm. my back. There was always someone watching my six, no matter what I was doing, because, and I would say, hold me accountable. You know, hey, here's what I'm doing. Here's, here's the limits I want to stay within. If I fall outside of that, I need you to let me know. Mm -hmm. And I know it's going to be uncomfortable. Sometimes having those conversations are so uncomfortable, but when you hire someone to have the uncomfortable conversation with you, then it becomes our responsibility. So what, it, oh, right. Cause when you're saying like, once, once you pay someone to do it, right. They're going to do it. There's yeah, a, there's yeah, a higher level, right. Which is why <laughs> that's true. When I, when I start opening the checkbook or start swiping the credit card or forking out money, it's like, oh, and you start doing it. And then you realize like all of this stuff I, I could have done. I could have done that. Right. You know what I mean? A lot of times, yeah. but it's the accountability and maybe somebody giving you like some precise perspective and saying like, ah, if you would just stop doing this and do more of this. We can't see behind us. You know, when I'm working with someone and I'm, whether they hired me for consulting or training or whatever it is, I say, hey, you hired me as a consultant. That means I need to let you know if I'm seeing anything that could be holding you back from, be, from having a better organization, from mm -hmm. having, you know, a tighter team, a tighter community. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to make sure that's comfortable with you if, cause, cause I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, hold myself to that. Is that, do you want me to tell you these things? Yes. And then from there they know, and I, and I make this clear too, you have a lot of friends, you have a lot of team members, you have a lot of employees, but you only got one consultant right now. You only got one coach. That's my role. I have to play that for you. Just like a commander mm -hmm. you got, Hey, you got one commander. You better be following within those guidelines of what a commander is supposed to be doing. So when when you go into an organization, what are some of the most common things? Like, how do you approach it? And I know every situation is different, but there has to be some commonalities when someone calls you in um, to help them. You know, what what is your approach? What do you try to do out of the gate? And what do you most commonly see, uh, which are some of the roadblocks? Because I hope some of the people that are watching, some of the leaders and CEOs that are watching this right now or listening to it, um, are able to hear what you say right now. And then maybe a little self-examination saying like, oh, is, is that something I'm struggling with? Or is that something that maybe... Um, if I just pay more attention to might improve a little bit. Yeah. I mean, that's a great question because here's, here's the big picture, right? It is a three phase operation. 
Like that's how we approach things with Mountain Movers Consulting. It's a three phase operation to help us accelerate your team. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants a faster, stronger team. They want to save money that, you know, they want all these things that are so important to a corporation. And I get why, mm -hmm. but we got to go through these phases. So the first phase is really to align. We want to make sure that we are aligning people, not just based off of their skill sets, but off, off of their gifts. And sometimes that can be a little scary for someone, but here's, here's my question to you. Do you want to lose them one day? Because every one of us is thinking in the back of our head, you know, yeah, I'm doing this for work, but also this is my, this is really what I believe I was created to do with my life. And they're going to leave unless you're the person who sells out to them, unless you're the person to say, look, I need you to keep working on this. But for now, we're going to start developing you in this area that's more important to you. So, you're, right? saying, and, so you're basically saying, you know, um, I'm working for a company and my job is to, you know, make sure that um, the email database is organized. But in, in reality, what I really love doing is making presentations. Right. And but the yeah. email database, I can do it. But I'm always like designing. I'm always studying communication. You're saying that knowing your people enough to know that and see that and say, okay, hey, I noticed that you like this, or what do you like to do? And you find out about it and be like, I know you're doing the email database right now, but I'll tell you what, I'm gonna look for opportunities for you to start working with the presentation team, right? And and in doing that, that person maybe spends less time on LinkedIn looking at job opportunities and spends less time trying to develop and stays more focused on like. How can we pull the sled together because it's fulfilling? Is that, in essence, what you're saying? Yeah, Paul. That I mean, that's a great, great summary of it. Why not be the one company to actually say, we care about you so much more than the position that you hold here, that we want you to stay with us and we want to develop you. And we know one day you might go to another company and you don't have to say these things, but mm -hmm. if we just think this a little bit and we're more flexible and understanding, I found that my organization that had a very bad turnover rate, okay? I mean, <laughs> it, it, wow. it was horrible, man. We, had, we kept about 55% of our people, I think. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, was, it was very, very bad because people didn't want to be in aircraft maintenance. They wanted to be in the cool flight companies. You know, they wanted to be doing all this other stuff. Yep. Now I was a pilot, but it didn't mean the rest of them were. Right. So the point is, <laughs> right. you know, you start noticing that, hey, the military gave us a specialty. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I come out of flight school, I better be a pilot. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, someone else comes out of maintenance school, they better be a maintainer. Mm -hmm. Like, you know that for a fact that they are trained in that. But what if that maintainer is actually better positioned for like an example, like you were saying, like design or something, you know, mm -hmm. what if we can use them more in a leadership role to design briefings and presentations, even mm -hmm. though they have to be good at maintenance, yep. let's get them aligned with their gift a little bit quicker. I think, I think we have a responsibility to do that as leaders, not just to keep our people, but so they can actually multiply their effectiveness of their gifts. Why do you think people don't, why do you, what do you think is the fear standing in the way of more companies doing that? Yeah, I think it's control, right? I think it's, I think, you know, I don't know for you, anyone listening, what it is for you, but for a lot of companies that ends up being just this control and, and actually there's a whole nother perspective to it. It's just the awareness isn't there, you know, they're, they're, right. they're not they even, they're not even looking that out. Right. They're just so, yeah, I, you know, you do think control, you think, um, I think it could be disruptive. Right. Or at least the thought is that in the short and granted, look, yes. in the short term, it is going to be disruptive. Right. Whenever you shift something, it's initially disruptive. But really, I think that looking at things in an immediate perspective is probably what's keeping more people from leaning in a little bit. But at the same in the same way that what you said, like the first question is, like, are you even paying attention at? to that you know um one of our one of our team members just just left uh just the other day was her last day and she was with us part-time and you know very entrepreneurial and she came in and she was she has a photography business um and and eventually you know she went to put all of her time into a photography business right she was a great member of our team and, and just contributed so much and you know i tried to sew into her as much as i could but you know i i always kind of knew like she's gonna go do her own thing now that being said, had I really gave her, she was an entrepreneur at heart now, but had I given her an ability or an opportunity to be entrepreneurial within the company, I bet she would still be here. Like, I mean, I'm just being honest right now. I mean, this was just yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I, mean, I, I saw the gift basket you got her though. That was awesome. She, she got that for me. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Totally. 
you would never even imagine what you what, uh, yeah uh, she what got me this there. great <laughs> gift basket and, yeah. and there were a couple of gag news but i went home and opened it and there were some meaningful things in there which obviously as a leader it's like oh yeah. meant something but but yeah this principle of you looking leaders looking deeper into their people is that something you help them do when you come in like and again yeah. that objectivity is something that you would probably be able to help them through a lot faster than if they were on their own yeah, I think it's time. Someone said this in one of the podcasts, one of your last podcasts, and I just love it so much that I got to repeat it. Um, I know she works with with uh, Vaynerchuk and she talked about throw the rule book out. I mean, yeah. that's so true right now. Like, mm -hmm. I don't it, it doesn't matter what you were doing. It matters what we're going to do now and what, we're, right. what we're beginning to do. And I mean, when I when I see this big picture thing, I see the disruption that you just said. Mm -hmm. But we're not talking about taking 100 employees and just flipping them all. We're talking about those 10 those 10 employees that really aren't positioned properly right now yeah. and the ones that are, let's start helping them create a contagious culture. I mean, that's where you and I were talking about um, a checklist that I developed to help people with that, to help them see gaps in, in what, what the military created and how you can do that now in the gaps for your organization. So, you know, example is camaraderie, right? Does your organization have camaraderie? You might think it does, but Based on a conversation, you know, with me, you might see there's actually some things you can be doing that's better, um, that's going to create this camaraderie. And, and really, when I look at camaraderie, it's this, you know, one team, one fight, right? Like we are in the fight together. Mm -hmm. Their your mission is their mission. I think that one team, one fight mentality. If, if I mean, obviously, the military embraces that because it's the stakes are so high, and yeah. and it's literally a fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're preparing to fight or you're engaging in a fight where um, where there's just a major consequence. And in business, I, I think if you really had an organization that was rallied around one team, one fight, I mean, those companies are unstoppable. I've, I've seen them. I've seen yeah. them firsthand. And we've all done business with companies where you're like, wow, this is really special. Every person from person on the phone to the person on the front line to the person making the product feel the same way. I mean, I guess that, that really is comes back around to what we talk about this well, what I talk about a lot of which is brand and brand being a feeling and the feeling that you have um, when you think about a person or an organization and that has just as much to do internally as it does externally. Like, what is the brand of your company and your experience there? And if that brand is like, oh, well, I, they care about me, they know about me, and they make me feel that I'm valued here and that I feel that I'm in the same fight and we're doing good things. If that's the brand, like you're gonna win. Um, I, I want to go into, um, you, you said there are three phases. The first one you said was align. What's the second one? After that, we can go into activating. And activating is really providing you with the tools to activate your team, right? Now that they're in the right seat and some people maybe are given some additional duties in the military, they do that all the time. You know, you might be uh, the safety officer when you, that's really not what you're in the position to do originally, but you got mm -hmm. assigned safety. Mm -hmm. So we get that all squared away and we can go into activating. And an example of activating would be getting the right frameworks in place to help you. So um, in this case, treating your business now like a mission, like an aircraft mm -hmm. that's getting ready to go on mission, you know, uh, helping someone have a framework of how to pre-flight the aircraft. Mm -hmm. You know, what's a startup procedure to a company? You know, what's a startup procedure to a team? Um, another piece of this, Paul, is assigning project managers. You know, like my background as a certified project management professional. So the, the big picture of this, though, would be um, actually helping people develop those systems and frameworks and doing it in a way to where it's sustainable. But let's give people project management authority, mm -hmm. not just responsibility, but authority. Mm -hmm. Give them a little bit of a budget to handle, mm -hmm. just a little bit. I mean, I don't care if it's 10 bucks, yep. give them a budget yep. and they can do anything they want with that $10. Now that's a very small budget, but the point is, I don't think people are getting trained up this way effectively. Mm -hmm. In the military as a brand new second lieutenant, I was assigned $2 million worth of equipment and <laughs> um, 40 soldiers. Oh my gosh. You know, so, so you got lives you're responsible for, oh, you got yeah. equipment you're responsible for, and you don't just have the authority, you have the responsibility, you have the combination of both. And uh, if you lose something, man, not only can you get in trouble, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they could take your money, they could sue you. I mean, anything, could, it doesn't need to be a suit, by the That's way, right. it's not a lawsuit. It's just, but still. hey, this was, this was determined you were wrong and it's your fault and you will pay us back for whatever you lost. So align, accelerate, 
I'm sorry, align, activate, and you said the last one was accelerate. Yeah, you got it. Yep, accelerate. So now we can speed up. You know, now we can really um, start leaning in that these things have all been developed and accelerating. I mean, this is when the culture has become very contagious at this point. People want to be a part of it. People don't want to leave. You know, um, they're talking about it at home. Imagine that. Imagine right. your employee actually going home and like being so excited, not just about what they do for work, but who they do it with. You know, who are they who are they um, in union with at work? Just excited about that. I mean, in the military, more than talking about what we did, like even as a pilot, it wasn't all about the flights. It was about the people on the flight with me. It was right. about the flight crew that we were leading. You know that I talk about brand as a feeling. Um, when you work with someone, when you work with a group of people, when you're speaking to a team or a company or even working with the CEO, how do you want the people to feel? Because brand is, <laughs> brand is a feeling. How, should, how do you want people to feel when you're working with them? I'm just always curious. What, what is that for you? Yeah, I want them to feel empowered. And you know what's so cool? How I got that so clear? By working with you, Paul. So I just <laughs> want to give you so much um, props for that, so much credit. Thank you for that. But it's true. I had all these words that I was focused on, but empowered is the focus it is on you know the reason the company's mountain movers consulting is we want to move mountains out of people's lives we want to move mountains as a team and there's something even cooler than that what about breaking a mountain what about shattering a mountain you're so empowered that your team breaks through the mountain and there's actually this is really cool there's a lesson inside it <laughs> so you you were empowered to push through and now that you've done that and we've done it the right way some some lesson has just shown up right there for your whole team to learn that you could never go Google. It had to come by doing it this way. That's amazing. You know, the, the empowered element of it, I don't think anybody doesn't want to feel empowered or anyone doesn't love the feeling of being empowered. I mean, you talk about, the, you talk about that all the time in society in general. When people have um, maybe some mental issues they're dealing with, people might have some emotional issues they're dealing with and they feel victimized they feel like they can't control things maybe their business is running away you know running away from them or they're too busy and the second they feel empowered to change that is just an amazing amazing feeling because you have control back and often that's an internal thing you know so i think that if you bring empowerment to people whether it's a ceo of a fortune 200 company or a whole team of people um sign me up i want to feel empowered i feel empowered right now from this conversation I'm feeling good. I'm feeling empowered. Um, what is the best way for the people that are watching, listening that, um, you know, want a little more of that in their organization or life? How can they reach out to you? Yeah. Email me at Adam at mountain movers, co. Okay. Adam at mountain movers, co is a great way for us to get in touch. Um, what I find is a lot of people will reach out after a podcast. They'll say, Hey, Adam, I heard from you on this podcast. This was my you know big takeaway. This is something that's resonating with me. Would love to get in touch, would love to connect. That's simple. I mean, just a couple couple sentences and we can get a conversation going and honestly, probably even put together a quick 15 minute phone call just to get to know each other better. And that's my best way that I can serve you. So, so that you can actually start accelerating your team using a combination of military flight strategies and also um, project management principles. That's amazing. Commander Adam Jones, thank you so much for spending some time with me in the audience today. I feel empowered. I'm ready to go. I know the audience is too. Um, I can't thank you enough. I uh, can't wait until next time. Man, it's been such a blessing being with you all. We'll see ya. We had this whole interview and then at that last moment when he told the story about strapping the Blackhawk onto you, feeling like a transformer, feeling like Iron Man. That was like the mind-blowing moment for me. And I know exactly what it feels like when immediately you feel empowered because your perspective is different. The world didn't change. The situation didn't change. You changed. And when us changing mentality or perspective can make that much of a difference, it's encouraging because that all lives within the sphere of our control. So I hope you reach out. I hope you take... Uh, Adam, Commander Adam up on his offer and send him an email and get 15 minutes on the phone with him because what do you have to lose for someone that can come in with that experience and give you a little bit of perspective shift? The ROI on that could be infinite. 
So thank you again for spending so much time with us here today. Thank you for being a part of this community. I hope that you have more perspective on your life today, even a little bit, so that you can move forward and serve the people around you in a better way, lead the people around you in a better way. And until next time, pursue that clarity. You just gotta love some.